Okay, so let's take a, a detailed look at how we might approach treating the glabella technically uh, in terms of our injection approach uh, using toxin. So the classic approach to treating the, the glabella when we think about what is you know, classically recommended by manufacturers is a five or seven point technique. I think probably you know, the five point injection technique is, is most widely adopted um, you know, worldwide, I guess. Uh, this basically involves a single injection point uh, towards the origin of Procerus in the midline, just below the medial portions of the, uh, of the brows. Then two further injections, uh, superior and, and lateral to, to that initial injection, basically into the region of the origin of the corrugator. Um, interestingly, you know, most of the manufacturer guidance does not specify uh, a, an, an exact point um, when, when you look at a lot of the summaries of product characteristics. And then a further injection lateral to that. Um, some of the um, manufacturers actually recommending an injection um, you know, in, in line with the midpoint of the pupil being the two most outermost injections when approaching the lateral corrugator. Okay, so in 2009, uh, a very large multi-center meta-analysis looked at the um, five-point technique, a classic five-point technique recommended by some of the manufacturers of toxin, looked at it uh, in very close detail and looked deeply at the rate and type of adverse events which occurred when injecting using this five-point technique. So this uh, meta-analysis demonstrated a rate of eyelid ptosis of 2%. So this was a large multi-center study, you know, 1,678 participants. So described an eyelid ptosis rate of 2% uh, and also described, you know, anything related to the lid and an adverse event. So th these are, so uh, basically uh, the combination of eyelid ptosis and any other lid complaints or subjective complaints that a patient may have had so that might be edema or a feeling of drooping or a feeling of heaviness at three percent so this five point injection technique you know is, was giving us on the basis of this study uh, a lid you know complication rate of somewhere between two and three percent okay so an eyelid ptosis rate of two percent uh, so that's one in every 50 patients uh, is simply intolerable and uh, is, is unnecessary and your patients should not be subjected to that. But it is interesting when you look in close detail at the manufacturer recommended approaches uh, in terms of this five point injection technique, um, there are some things within that which I think preclude to a higher rate of litosis. I think that uh, particularly the approach to the lateral corrugator perpendicular to the face where we're going essentially 90 degrees uh, into a region you know, somewhere around the mid pupillary line, I think it leads to an injection often which is probably too deep um, and increasing the risk of litosis. I think that's one of the things. It's the reason why personally I prefer to approach this region uh, from lateral to medial, so at, a, at, a, at an angle of 10 to 20 degrees to the skin, to increase the likelihood of a more superficial injection around the portion of the, of the lateral corrugator um, rather than going too deep and inadvertently toxin running along the periosteum and having an effect on the muscles which we don't want to, notably the vader palpebrae superioris and the tarsal muscle. In 2021, a novel three-point injection strategy to treat the glabella was described. It basically involved sparing the lateral corrugator injection entirely while injecting the medial corrugator at a 45 degree angle from below essentially. So the approach coming from underneath the brow, so in a caudal to cephalic direction um, and advancing the needle right down until we touch the periosteum of the supersurrey ridge, so that is the, the, the frontal portion of the bony orbit, and then injecting our toxin in this manner. Okay, so interestingly um, from that study, when we look at the results, not a single patient um, developed either an eyelid ptosis or 
any form of bryotosis. Obviously, when we're injecting the central portion of the corrugator, it's really medial bryotosis that we want to avoid. But it is, it is a very interesting finding. So 0% adverse event rate versus typical five-point manufacturer-recommended approach, you know, getting closer to, to 2%. Um, the uh, interesting thing about the technique from having used it myself, I, I've definitely found um, you know, that, that, it, that it's a very well-tolerated approach and is definitely an option. I think that sparing the injection at the lateral corrugator is probably the mainstay of avoiding the lid ptosis issues. And it makes, it makes good sense. I think from, from my perspective, the, the only issue that you're going to have with avoiding the lateral corrugator completely is that some patients, particularly those with very hyperactive um, glabellar complexes and, and sort of frowning in general, you're going to get some patients where when sparing the lateral portion of the corrugator, they still have a little bit of, of activity laterally um, when the treatment has begun to work. Um, and that can be annoying and a nuisance to some patients. So that would be my only personal finding caveat to that study, but still a very interesting study and something for all of us to consider. I hope you enjoyed this content. If you did, hit like, subscribe and share to see a bit more.